All right, welcome to Victory the Podcast. Special guest who I, I you know, I just had to say, you know, before she can beat you up. Besides well, that, of course she can beat me up. And Kevin Dillon did not show up because he's terrified of it. But I was just saying, Juliana, like Juliana Pena, the UFC I, bantamweight. Champion. I understand, but I'm just saying, like. We would misjudge her because I, I would not, I would have, if I walked in the office and she was sitting there at a typewriter, I wouldn't know. have turned my head I and I just you. watched the fight, which you're <laughs> unbelievable and, uh, and congrats. And we're excited to have you. And Kevin Connolly, I'm usually the one who talks, but he's told me today he wants to be the focus because he's just really well, like I'm excited. Proud, so. I'm proud of my research. Yeah, I'm proud I of like my, it. I'm All right, so I will research. let you guys go. I'll jump so in. You jump in, Doug. Yeah. You provide some color. Right. You provide some color. <laughs> okay, so Juliana, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. This Thank is, you so this much. This is amazing. Thank this you. Amazing. I appreciate that. So you're from Spokane, Washington. Yes, sir. And is it true? That you were discovered in a cardio kickboxing class? <laughs> yeah. It is true. So yeah. Doug's like, don't say that. That sounds like a weird rumor. Doug wanted well, me to confirm. Well, Kevin has, has asked a couple of guests things that are not true. One and they time, look at him like, all right. So anyway, time. I'm very interested <laughs> in this story, though. So, so yeah, how does something like that go? Okay, I will say it in as uh, best as terms as possible. I was overweight. I needed to lose weight. So uh, my sister invited me to a woman's cardio kickboxing class. And uh, that's kind of where I got my start. Kind of threw my first punch. I haven't looked back since. How old? were you at this point? I was 19 years old. So I threw my first punch at night. Well, I threw my first official punch at 19 years so old. So there's still a shot for Conley to learn how to fight. No, no, <laughs> there's not. But I mean, so you're in this class yeah. and, and is the instructor like, man, this girl really knows how to, really knows how to throw a punch, right? Was it that sort of thing? Did he, did it appear to him that you had previous training? Yeah. Well, so I'm the baby of four and my brothers and sisters, they beat the crap out of me. And <laughs> right. so like, I had all this aggressiveness. I got in a few street fights, um, in school. Like we had like boxing parties and uh, I had like only fighting from that type of experience and defending myself the whole time as a, as a young uh, kid growing up. Um, and then, yeah, I, I threw my first punch and he said, hey, who taught you how to box? I said, uh, nobody. And he was like, well, who taught you how to punch? I said, you just did. And he was like, we got a natural. So. That's yeah. unreal. Why don't you stick around? I want to talk to you about a couple of things. Right? Let's get this girl going in, in the UFC. OK, so this is, and we'll ask kind of stupid questions, too, in the sense of, where is the belt right now? <laughs> right now as we speak. The belt's in Chicago. It's I in actually, Chicago. I totally forgot to uh, ask Locke for uh, the the replica belt that we take on the on the road. Okay. Uh, I forgot to bring that. I'm so sorry. So there's the real belt well, is at your house. The real and then there's house. like a replica that you'll bring to parties or whatever it is yeah. that you have to do. Yeah, because there's like an extreme like belt etiquette that I'm still unfamiliar with. Like it got like my, so I have a little group of um uh, wives that like support me in Chicago. I call them the Real Housewives of St. Charles, <laughs> and uh, they were like they got in a fight over it actually because uh, one asked one husband asked if he could wear it right after I won it. I said yeah, no problem. And so the, the other woman got very upset. Like you don't know how hard this girl's worked. I've literally seen her blood, sweat, and tears for this thing, and you just come up and ask her. Ask you were wearing it. You're yeah. posting it on Facebook. Like this is ridiculous. And I'm like it's fine. You know it's fine. Yeah. But then there is an etiquette. That but then yeah, I went to the WWE and some kid behind me was like, can I hold your belt? And I was like, well, yeah, like, sure. So I gave it to him. And then, like, my heart was just, like, pounding out of my chest. And so I was like, this kid's going to run off with my belt. But what if he scratches it? <laughs> then I saw, you know, it's real. I saw, like, some scratches on it. And I was like, I don't want scratches on my belt. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I'm still trying to figure out, like, do I let everybody hold it? Do I, you know, say no? Like, do I, you know, get a fake one and let them hold that I'm and have a heyday no. with it? I'm with the no. Yeah, I'm I don't with know the, you what know to what? do. I, don't, I really don't know what to do. I mean, I'm not sure if you're a hockey fan, but the Stanley Cup, which is the you know the big cha the big trophy. Right. There's etiquette with that. You're really not. I mean, well, you can do whatever you want, right? But I don't think theoretically you're supposed to hold the Stanley Cup over your head unless you've won it. I personally would never put on the belt. Well, That's just me. Tom Brady threw the Super Bowl trophy uh, almost into the uh, the lake. <laughs> I so, don't know what to say. I guess the, when you got eight, I'm uh, still seven obsessed. Titles. So I just want to go back for half a second. Sorry, Kev. Just for no. a second, I, I'm obsessed <laughs> with this nat this natural talent. Uh, we have kids, and we of course we all want our kids to have some crazy natural talent, but. Is the family, I know they beat the hell out of you. Yeah. Are they good fighters? Did anyone have any talent? No, well, my brother was a massive WWE fan. So, like, he practiced all his moves on us. <laughs> right. Like, he practiced them all. <laughs> and, um, no, I would say so no. all you need is the brother taking the little sister with a pile driver. I mean, that's not Literally, a literally. He also, I remember, you guys remember the 80s where the guys used to have their socks up to here, you know, up to the shins? Of course. Yeah. He would take those long tube socks and stuff them with more socks. He'd pack <laughs> them in there. And we called them sock bombs. And so he 
would literally beat us with these sock bombs. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I think he literally, um, you know, prepped me for what I was going to have to deal with in fighting. And, like, any punch that I take, I'm like, if you could take a sock bomb punch, you could take a <laughs> real punch. Now you, you know could kick mean? the shit out of the brothers now, correct? I mean, he's he's a pretty big boy, but, right. yes, I still I, – I, I had to finally eventually choke him out on Christmas. <laughs> On Christmas in front of his five boys because I was like, I'm sick of this shit. That's you know what amazing. I mean? Like, like, listen, I will choke you out. Uh, yeah. I don't want to do it. It's Christmas. Nobody wants to do this Well, the holidays. Christmas before, he got tough in front of his five boys and he threw me in the Christmas tree. And so <laughs> so then, like, the next Christmas, I was like, this Christmas, I'm ready. You know? You're so, ready to go. Yeah, I, I, I tried to him. choke Connolly out once. He did not tap, though. He didn't tap. <laughs> well, that's my next question about the choke out. Like, if you were going to choke Doug and I out right now, <laughs> is it just automatically you go out or can one, can you withstand... Or are we, are we just both sleeping automatically? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If I were tougher than Doug, which I, like, just in Like spirit. a tougher neck and throat cavity? Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it gonna, is it relatively in the same time frame that you could choke Doug out? I mean, out you guys would have to, like, be able to figure out how long can you hold your breath for. Right, you know? that's really what it is, what yeah, it comes down exactly. to. Right? Can I just say, with, I'm not embarrassed. I don't want to be involved in this. I don't want to be choked out. I, <laughs> you don't want to do a demonstration? No. Who I was don't. it? Was it Letterman that got choked out on live TV? I don't know. I by know, a WWE wrestler? I know what's-his-face. Uh, Marty McFly kicked him in the head. On Letterman, do you remember that? Uh, he, there, Christian, some, uh, who, whoever it was, maybe it was Dick Cavett, but somebody they were doing a and it was a WWE guy, and they were kind of saying that WWE is fake. You say, "Oh, you want it's fake? Come here." Let me oh, I something. remember that. But when he choked him out, yeah. knocked him out yeah, on yeah, live. I don't, I don't want. So that. We don't I, want to I do believe that. in you. It'd and be a I great social clip. Good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really drive up, really drive up the viewers. All right, what so, other research you got? Oh, also, <laughs> so you know, Juliana's been, you know, you've been, you've been through it, right? You've yeah. had some tough injuries. Yes, you didn't just fall into this fight with Amanda Nunez. This was your. Fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've been I've been at this for a long time. Yes. Right. So, what was your at what point was your most devastating injury where you go like yikes? Um, I would definitely say tearing four out of five ligaments in my knee. Yeah. So, and I've done them both. But <sighs> during the, one, the fight, the four no, the four out of five was definitely the the big one for me. Um, and then you know, obviously, I've had some street fights where I where I got you know really hurt. Um, I love that. that that's, I, that's amazing. That's I mean, another there was one street fight that I got hurt, and then there was one where I was literally just walking on the sidewalk, and I got ran over. So it was like, you know. What do you mean? A hit and run? Or what do you mean? Uh, you know, there was these guys. I was walking on the street on the sidewalk, and these guys came around their car, the, the car around the corner. They were catcalling me, you know, hey, mamacita, da 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 And then they ended up literally running me over. So <laughs> <laughs> was What like, the fuck? Yeah. Right, that's not good. Right. Yeah, this, not is, good. this is bad etiquette right so there. You, yeah, that is bad etiquette. So, <laughs> yeah. so you've, had, you've had some injuries, I've had right? some injuries. You've had some injuries. And that was way that back. Was so you've come, past, yeah. you've come back from the end. Yes, I have. So you come into this Amanda Nunez fight. Yeah. Now I, we have, a, a, you were turned on to me by a guy named Chad Bronstein. You know, yes, Chad? Chad's okay. that's a man right there. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pissed because he, he put you on my radar in a big way. And yeah. when I'm sitting and watching this fight, I'm going, looked at July and I said, we're supposed to bet on this fight. This is, this is, this is a real, this is a real thing. So you get in the ring with Amanda Nunez. Yeah. You know, to everybody else, well, people will call it maybe the greatest upset of UFC in UFC history. Not to you, obviously. No. Right. No. No. Right. No. I've been no calling. I've been calling for this fight for five years. You know, I've been calling for this for a long time, actually. And she's been like avoiding the fight for five years. You know, so it was like everyone's like, "All oh, this girl won't stop talking all this crap." You know, I'm like, I've been saying the same thing consistently for five years. It's just falling on deaf ears, and nobody's listening to me. They all think I'm gonna get killed in ten seconds. You know what I mean? So I was just waiting for my shot and and trying. To get her to the fight, I just have to get her to the fight. If I that's got to be get so frustrating. Fight, it is frustrating because I'm just like I feel like a broken record. You know what I mean? But I'm like I'm I'm telling you guys the truth. I'm gonna win this fight. I'm gonna beat this girl. I promise you. And now, how are you gonna be now that you're in the position to kind of dictate who you're gonna fight? Yeah. Are you gonna try to? Have a couple of uh, you know, I want meatballs my in there. No, so I want, want my rematch. Want rematch. Yes, I want my rematch. It wasn't a fluke. And so I want to go in there and be like, I'm, I'm telling you, it wasn't a fluke. And then so I just want to, you know, shut the naysayers up one more time and let you know I'm legit. I'm, I'm real. You know, do you feel like people think that that was a fluke? Oh, yes. So many people. Yes. There's so many people that are you're like, reading the message boards too much. But, but that also, like a fluke to look, me. When, it, when it's an upset, they they uh, will always go to, you know, Buster Douglas. And, and you know, what happened with Buster Douglas after the Mike Tyson fight? And I'm not saying he ever would have beat him again, but he really didn't prepare for the second time. So you're going to go into this as if it's the biggest opportunity in your life again? Or are you I, now feeling like you got her number and know what to do? I mean, it's definitely something that I take serious. You have to take every single fight extremely serious. 
this, but yes, I do have her number, and I am going to go do it again. So, You're in her head, for yeah. sure. Well, and I, th- that's the other thing. I was like, yeah, everybody can have the belt. I'm going to go get another one in you know, a few more months, so it's not that big of a deal. So you guys can do whatever you want with that belt. Like, I'm just going to go get one in a few more months. Now, one of the things about UFC, and, and, and inevitably, right? I mean, unless you you're in boxing, it's Mayweather and Rocky Marciano. Losses are part of it, right? You're going to lose. Yes. Does it feel like it's better to have an early loss and almost get that out of your system as I, opposed to having an undefeated record hanging over your head? It's like just get a couple losses on the on the books. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, when you go through those losses, they teach you so much and they help you grow. But like I've had those experiences at the highest level. So I've I've had that. You know what right. I mean? And it's gonna come with the sport, you know. But like when I already had those, it's like I already know what that's like. So I know what I don't want to feel going forward. And so, you know, it was supposed to happen in the pro uh, record prior to the UFC, so that way you can have like this, you know, spotless record into the UFC. But they unfortunately happened when I was in the UFC right. in the earlier parts of my career. So they're just learning experiences, you know. P- wins and losses is going to come with the sport. And and so Julia, we had John Cavanaugh on, who who coaches sure. Connor, and he said it's really like Connor at this stage of his life. It's still he's got the same drive and love for this thing. Is this a means to an end for you, or do you just love to fight? It's it's my it's my l- livelihood. It's my passion. It's it's something that I'm truly passionate about. I mean, I could talk to a rock all day about MMA. It's something that I absolutely love. It has completely engulfed my life since I threw my very first punch, and uh, it's just something that is me. You know, they say, well, how did you find fighting? I didn't find fighting. Fighting found me. And it has, you know, taken over my life and it's just something that I love to do and something that I'm extremely passionate about. Is there about. fear when you get into the ring or no? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. If there is no fear, then you're lying. But I can also say that, like, I was so ready for the fight that fear wasn't what was running through my mind when I was about to go walk out there. The press conference was you know, more fearful for me. I've never done a press conference before. So that to And that me, was like a that's that like a me, high end press conference. Oh, Very that, few people have those. That press conference, my heart was pounding out of my chest. Right. But leading up to the fight, like going out to the fight, pff, my heart was not pounding out of my chest going out there. And, and so we sorry Kev, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, yeah, I'm talking really, too much. But asking a lot of, a lot of you know, questions you know, for a guy that loves pickleball. I, I, found, I, found, <laughs> I love pickleball. <laughs> oh that'll that'll beat your ass. <laughs> but no fighting it. But so Ronda Rousey, I kind of I found her a little early before like she was real mainstream when I actually was going to put her in the entourage movie which I have no idea if you've seen or the show or anything but um, she was on Jim Rome and I saw her she's this beautiful woman well spoken as are you and I was like she she can't really fight I mean this is crazy and then I watched the fight and I was like holy shit um, is, did she, is she someone who really paved the way for all of this a little bit or, or what? what do, what's your feelings? I don't think she loves uh, Rhonda. Okay, that's all right, but I want to hear that she anyway. Love and you don't have to love her. That's fine. I would just say that Rhonda was a phenom in the fact that she would you know be able to get these fights over in 10 seconds. And that was unheard of at the time. So she got Dana White's attention, and she was you know one that opened up the doors for all the rest of us. Yeah. So she absolutely did that. Right. And do you want to? pursue anything uh, acting or being in in movies and stuff that's something that I've always wanted to do especially as a kid you know I always you know would be in front of the camera or have a microphone in my hand you know that was something that I always um did growing up however I feel like that stuff will come later right now I just want to focus on fighting I think that's the right that's good, yeah I think that's good. so you got this Valentina Shevchenko okay do you feel the need to go back and well, you have your Amanda Nunez rematch, which is the which is the match, right? That's it's a payday. Yeah. Is there a part of you that wants to go back and say like, oh, and by the way, yes, let's talk about a fluke. What you did <laughs> yes. was a fluke, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you up too. So do you feel the need, or do champions feel the need to go back and? I don't want to say repair, but like kind of settle some some old business. I would love to avenge that loss. The answer is yes. I would absolutely love to avenge that loss. I was winning that fight, and I can beat her, and right. I just I fucked up. So right. yeah. So I, that fight could be in the future. How well. did you fuck up? Uh, you know, I first off, I'll just say that you know you can't at this level um, underestimate anybody. You have to assume that everybody is versed everywhere on the ground on the feet but at that time in my life I was like 17 time Muay Thai world champion all I got to do is take this chick to the ground and it's over and then I got on board so I she think just caught you she basically. caught me yeah I was trying to you know punch a hole through her face and <laughs> you know like if you punch your hand through the snow it goes right through that's what I was <laughs> right. trying to do I was just trying to punch a hole right through her face and right 
I got caught. I can't believe how nice you are and how sweet you seem. It's <laughs> so bizarre to me. I can't also, make it. Doug is like sitting here with his banana and his mush trying to act healthy. We're sitting here with the champ. It's, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I'm like, you guys are like, she's so sweet. And I'm like, I'm trying to punch she's a hole through her face. <laughs> By the way, I was happy you said snow. I was thinking like, oh my God, she's going to punch a hole in the wall. Maybe we can help her. Uh, she can have it knock down that wall. Yeah, we got to knock down a wall for it. And, things. <laughs> and that's why I was a little disappointed because we're about to shoot something and, and I know I could find something for Juliana. <laughs> yeah. So if, if we distract you a little, we, we might call to, you we something. We don't want to distract it, so. you. So you, you touched on um, Amanda Nunez, uh, like eh, maybe ducking you and or, or whatever it is. But there's there's two sides to being getting hurt in training camp and, and calling off a fight, right? Yeah. Um, what are you what are your what are your thoughts on that? I mean, when you're hurt, you're hurt, yeah. right? So it's like I you've, you know you'll hear Connor say like I I, just, I need this guy to show up, yeah, right? Like there becomes a point where it's like the, the person pulls out of a fight and then you end up fighting somebody that you're not preparing for. But on the other hand, people get hurt. Yeah. It's, a, it's a combat sport, right? So yeah. what, what, are you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on pulling out of the fight? Do you fight with the injury? Do you, how, do, how, does that, how does that go? And is there ways to confirm that? Does the UFC go, yeah, he really is, he, or she really is, you know, she's got a they'll, they'll They'll cover for you. Um, <laughs> but also, absolutely, injuries, it's a, it's a combat sport, and uh, injuries absolutely do happen. With that being said, um, you can't pull out of a, you can pull you can pull out of a fight for whatever reason you want. No one's putting a gun up to your head. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that at the end of like a card, like a fight card, it'll say card subject to change, and that's because MMA is such a brutal sport that anything can happen. I remember uh, we ha we throw uh, fights in Spokane at Northern Quest Casino with Rick Little, and uh, this kid one time said that he couldn't fight because he chewed on a piece of rope and he broke his tooth and so now he's out of the fight so i've heard the craziest excuses that you could think of for people pulling out of fights it's scary you right. know and so especially with it being a mental aspect too there's mental things that play come into play so you know someone will say that they're injured but you know that it's just because they don't want to fight or someone is legitimately injured and they can't fight so you know i've heard it all and in, in the fight game you have to expect that there's going to be you know reasons why people pull out of the fights it's just part of the fight game does the does the talking the good ones intimidate you at all, or that's kind oh, of... Oh, she's really good at it. What do you mean, the good ones, like... <laughs> I, I, whoever you selling consider the fight. Uh, oh. as good as you are. I don't selling, mean the fighters. Yeah. Selling like the, the fight. The talkers the with the big mouth, because right. we know some fighters are better with their mouth than they are in the Well, they're thing. selling does, fights, right? Yeah. yeah, but does that... I mean, when you're going through these things, do you really get heated up, or are you kind of put on I feel like I'm not trying to, you know, sell tickets by any means, but what I'm trying to do is I'm telling my truth and what was really happened in my career and, and what has really happened to me. These are life experiences that I've actually gone through. So anytime I say something, I'm I'm not just pulling it out of thin air. This is actually my truth and what has happened to me in my career. So people view it as, you know, crap talking or, oh, she's just trying to sell tickets. But this has actually happened. This right. is, I'm not lying about her, you know, not taking the fight for five years. When I beat Kat Zingano at UFC 200, she had won the belt against Misha Tate at UFC 200. I came out before her and then five fights later, she had won the belt. She said in that press conference that I was next and that she would fight me. And then Rhonda came off of those two or getting knocked out by Holly and then Rhonda got to cut the line after getting brutally knocked out she got to cut the line and get an automatic title fight against Amanda even though I was next that was supposed to be your that was, that your was supposed shot. to be that my New fight. Year's Eve fight was that fight. was supposed to be my fight and Rhonda got to cut the line and got to you know she had her fight with Amanda after that and so I had to wait and then I had to wait longer and then I got you know uh, pregnant and then I had to wait longer but then even when I came back from pregnancy I still won I still beat a girl that you know was hadn't lost in seven fights and had just won the belt herself um and so i was fighting world champion after world champion so it was nico montano world champion valentina shevchenko world champion jermaine durandyman world champion i'm fighting the cream of the crop here i'm top at the top of my division and i'm winning i didn't win against jermaine and I dropped that loss against Valentina, but those were two losses in 10 years. And they were to world champions. And if you go back and watch the fights, I'm winning those fights. I'm literally beating the crap out of them. I'm like, I have this in the bag right before I freaking shit the bed, you know? So yeah, those I mean, are you're, you're, so any you're, given you're, Honestly, Sunday. I got to be honest. Doug, he's starstruck. She's awesome. He's starstruck. But I, what do you like in relationships? Are they scared <sighs> of you? I mean, you seem it's a like quiet, it's a good question. you have a quiet calm about you that that's kind of unnerving a little bit. Yeah, I, I honestly feel like I'm the easiest person to deal with. I feel like I'm so, like, laid back. I'm easygoing, you know. But, like, for some reason, I have, like, this real trouble with, <laughs> with relationships. relationships. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not much like uh, Doug over here. He's yeah. got his own, his own uh, problems. He's doing great. No, I'm but I mean, if I could, like... Uh, 
I'm not trying to be bossy. I'm just trying to look at the bigger picture for everyone. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? If I say, hey, can you go get me this? It's that way if you go get this and then I get what I need to get, then we can be on the road and get this going faster. You know I what I mean? I'm passion. looking at the bigger I picture. I think it's passion. And I think, like, you always need to have someone that has that same fire that you have and that you obviously bring to this. I mean, what's the training regimen like? I mean, how are you six days a week or what? Yeah, so I've I've only been three days a week uh, since since winning because I'm all over the place right now. I'm, I'm, I'm literally going from here to Austin to New York back to uh, Chicago and then I'll be in Vegas so I'm I'm all over the place right now I'm literally trying to get these treadmill workouts and lift a little bit in these right. hotel gyms right now and that's what I was talking about earlier with Buster it's like how do you not get distracted by stuff that obviously you need to do for your livelihood for the sport but how do you keep your eye on the prize that you right. gotta be in the best shape of your life. You just you gotta do. stay active. You have to stay in the gym. You have to stay in the gym. And I absolutely am staying in the gym. I'm just not three times a day, every single day, like I was when I'm in the camp. Right. So, so where you, where do you fight out of? Are okay. You fighting out of Spokane. I, I fight out of Chicago by way of Spokane, Washington. So that's what it is. Now, who who do you get to decide that? Uh, what you're, where you're fighting at? Well, I know that my head coach in Spokane was super pissed because I'm the sure. UFC made my very first fight shirt that you could like sell to the people that are in the arenas, and the shirts like Juliana Pena, Chicago, Illinois, and right. he was like, "That's bullshit," you know, He's like offended. Yeah, he was offended, and so um, you know, I'm, I fight out of Chicago by way of Spokane, Washington, right. and I love when Bruce Buffer says that, you know, fighting out of Chicago by way of Spokane, <laughs> and I'm like trying to always give props to the 509 and where I'm from and my roots. I mean, if that guy doesn't get you fired up before a fight, Fight than nobody is. Yeah. I mean, how incredible is that? The right? best. He is the best. He was I at my birthday, Bruce. remember? Was he? Yeah. That's the 45th. Awesome. Conley doesn't remember. Conley was a little That's bomb. That's not true. I knew he was. Of course he was there. <laughs> Why, of course he was there. Why are you such good friends with Bruce Buffer? Like, <laughs> no, I wouldn't <laughs> say it if he oh, wasn't right, right, there. Right. I mean, Mark Roberts was friends with him. That's why he make something like that. I love Bruce. Bruce is a. Weird if I made that up, wouldn't it? It'd be weird. And now, what about your what about your walkout music? Who who picks? Well, I'm serious. I like the this, question. This I'm just saying. Be, I, this should be a big he's thing. He's never for me. prepared for an interview as much as he has for I'm this. Excited. That's all I, I'm he saying. He did like his due diligence, and I appreciate that. I do too. I, I do too. Yes. I like it. Who, I appreciate that. I, I often fantasize about the only thing that would be fun for the fight is the, your what walkout song, <laughs> right. right? Like a song comes on the radio, you're like, you know what? I think this might be my walkout right. song. Of course, it changes every couple of weeks. Do you think about your walk? What point do you think about <laughs> your walkout? And do you think about that kind of thing? Because it is part of the sport. The showmanship, right? Yes, yes. And you want the song. I mean, listen, you could argue that that song made Rhonda. There was something about her walkout song. Yes. So do you think, is it something you think about, you care about, and is it, I think, at the last minute, like, hey, what a... I, day of yes okay so this is such a weird question I care about music so much I have such a passion for music my dad used to um, pay us money to like who sings a song you know and, and we'd be like Whitney Houston I always love you you know like whatever the song was he would pay us money to know what the songs were so I have such a wide range of music taste I'm talking all over the place I listen to so much music M music is one of my biggest passions I am in love with music it's so hard for me to narrow down one song and so the other flip side to this question is I'm a a little bit superstitious. You won't be thinking too much about the walkout song. And right? not only that, but one time I walked out to the same song twice and it <laughs> didn't go my way. What song? Um, it was, uh, I think it was the birthday cake song by like Rihanna. It was like <laughs> right. cake, cake, cake. <laughs> and and, and I, I ended, it didn't go my way. Okay. So I, I ended up being like, song. I cannot walk out to the same song twice because I got all superstitious about it. So it got to the point where I was like, having anxiety over this and so i was like that can't be good for yeah, a fight exactly stressing so over i was the like walk out dana music. you pick the song and so then dana started picking my song every fight week but every time or every yeah every time i went to go fight but it would be a theme of like crazy so it was mm -hmm. like crazy train by uh, Ozzy I, was, I was gonna say you should go or like crazy train. i just walked out to oh, i can't even remember the song but uh maybe i'm the one blinded melon i think it was or Blind um melon? Who is a schizophrenic psycho? Yeah, maybe I'm the one. We listen to rap music. Yeah, no, I, I listen know, to I rap music too. But <laughs> anyways, so now it's been like the the woman Heidi Dean, who's in charge of the music walkout songs. She's the one that like is picking my song every time, and she knows how I am about you know walking out to the same song twice. And so every song, it's different every time. But when I feel do you like get it's a though? Theme and of like craziness. Do you get I it early? Get it 
as I'm walking out to so the So you don't know? I, I have no idea. It's like a surprise. It's like, Just not this song. Yes, Just yes. Just not this And it's like the song where I'll be like, this is the one thing that I'm looking forward to, right? Is like what I, I get to hear what they picked for me. Yeah. And so I get it. That's the one thing that I look forward to as I'm walking out. Have you like, been disappointed yet? You're like, yeah, this kind of song doesn't exactly <laughs> get me fired at up. At first, I was pretty bummed <laughs> at like the, you know, Schizophrenic Psycho song because it started out slow. But then I, when I was in the octagon and I'm getting ready for it, I was like, I am. Schizophrenic psycho. Yes, like let's go. And so, like, I was so excited to like have that song, and now it's like on repeat. So, this is, these are all such superficial questions, but I've always wondered. Now you're the champ, yeah, right? Now you come out last. You put on a light show. Are you gonna do anything? I'm, I'm serious. Like, you, you see the way Connor comes out and yes. there's lights, and yes. there's, that's only something you can do as the champ, right? I, I have no idea. No, well, no, not technically. Brent, uh, Brian Ortega, uh, I walked out, I went to UFC 268, I believe it was, and he walked out to, you know, that movie where they all wear masks and they get to kill somebody for like 24 hours? Uh, uh, purge. The purge. Purge, yes. Yeah. He wore mm. the purge masks and all of his corners wore the purge masks. So the whole place pitch dark. And then it's like the sirens. Wah. <laughs> 10 seconds, five seconds. That would scare three the shit seconds. out of me. And by the way. whole place is like black, but like the alarm lights are going off like red flashing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden his corner comes out and they all have these like white masks, but their eyes are X's, <laughs> like neon X's, like this. I would and, run. Oh man, it was the <laughs> coolest walkout I have ever seen in my entire life. But he's not the champ and he did that. So I was thinking, you know, oh my gosh, I, I want to have some awesome walkout like that too. But then there that is pretty. It that was pretty the sickest chill. walkout that, that I had. Oh, it's the sickest the walkout Connelly, I've ever seen. We're going to spend some time and see well, if we can pitch you a walkout because I love this. Somebody's got to design that. Some, yeah. Somebody yeah. came up yeah. with that yes. idea. It's an awesome yes. idea. Yes. I know. Israel idea. Adesanya walks out with like a TikTok dance crew. Like they're like doing like the thing <laughs> and they like, bam, and they can all, they're like. Your coach that? Like, listen, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to leave the gym a little early. We're rehearsing the walkout. We got to do a dance number. So, and so in my head, I'm like, I totally want to do that. But here's the flip side to that. You have to win. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, did he win the purge fight? No, Ooh. no. And I'm like, can you, you steal that? I mean, I mean you <laughs> have, you, you have to win. If you don't win, then it's like, right. Uh, well, listen, Deontay Wilder walked in in a mask that was too heavy and made him tired for the fight <laughs> when he got beat. That's that what was, I'm saying. That's the worst case of it ever. He had, you mentioned, you said, yeah, 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 of course. Like it weighed like 40 pounds. It yeah. did. And then he said he was tired because it was, <laughs> it was heavy from carrying the, <laughs> carried it. But the, the sportsman part of me loves to see it. Connor does a great one yeah. where it's like an, this Irish thing. And then yeah, all of a sudden, what is that? Like Sinead O'Connor? Yeah, like some crazy. Irish song and then it rolls into Biggie Smalls, right? Yes. So, you know, I just always wondered who decides that. And I, well, I you got a pretty damn good answer, but I, I want to come up with uh, we're gonna th uh, we're gonna pitch next you, we're gonna pitch you some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I can you, you can do whatever scheme. you want. You know what I mean? It's right. your fight. It's it's putting your, the, but it's putting you know? pressure on you. Yeah, it is. Right? And that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes you just got to get down to the meat and potatoes and keep it simple. Keep right it up. simple, stupid. You know, don't get too much with the fluff because that's when you know you get distracted. Did you hear how Juliana led us now? Like not to get too complicated with our pitch, or she won't even respond. <laughs> well, we'll throw some off the wall thing out of it. Like, tell those fucking victory guys never <laughs> to speak to me again. No, talk to Chad. I, I like to say that now. Talk to my agent. Uh, yeah. No, I was Chad your agent. Chad's my agent. Oh, well, there he is. Okay. Yes. So, that, all right. So he was might have been he's biased. He's the best free agent in the world because he's brought me so much money and he hasn't taken a dime yet. So we I'm had like, dinner with Chad. And that will that will end. We yes, had, I know. <laughs> we, had dad, we, we had dinner with Chad and uh, Mike, dad? right? Yeah, Chad. Yeah, not Chad. Dad. Not Chad. Chad and Mike Tyson. Yes. Yes. He he. Represents uh, Mike Tyson as well. Yes, yep. very cool. And Mike Tyson just came in as a new sponsor for me as well. So nice. Tyson 2.0, a little shout out to Tyson 2.0. Daniel Carcello, do you know? Uh, yes, we sauna. Yes, we sauna is also my sponsor. We sauna, Philo, Tyson 2.0. All these guys. Columbia Care, yep. Jones we Soda. Sauna. Carcello's a good buddy of mine. That's how I know Chad and do all you? those guys. Yeah. Love Daniel. That's a guy that can take a good punch in the face. Yeah, Carcello? He's, he's, oh, his, uh, his fight name in hockey was the car bomb. We should have some concepts. Just because we should. Yeah, absolutely. We're a con we're yeah. A, this is a content house. We'll, we'll reach out through Chad, but we're going to... Do you like horror movies? Uh-uh. <laughs> what do you watch? And what do you what, what do you watch on TV? What do you watch? Squid Games. I saw Squid. I saw Squid, Squid Games. Everybody I saw that. Squid Games yes. except me. So you didn't watch it? I didn't watch it. I, oh I'm man! Too far Make behind. sure you don't put it on the you know the dub cast because it's not oh, the same. Oh my god! Exactly. It's, not the same. it's horrible with the with the, <laughs> yeah, the, the you bad acting. Yes, but yes. What shows do you like? 
Um, Besides Entourage, you don't have to say that. <laughs> we'll, we'll edit that you love it. I love Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. I love those guys. <laughs> right? That's so funny. Is that still on? Yeah, they just came nice. out with their new season. Oh, nice. Nice. Yes, nice. I love Started those guys. Started season 23. <laughs> yeah. But do you watch like uh, any of the Succession or this any of This is going to sound horrible and it you makes me feel TV. really bad. Yeah, I have. I, I sat down on my couch last week and it was the first time that I sat there for like three months. Does not sound horrible at all. It sounds like you're actually doing something with life unlike us who've seen everything that's on streaming. I, my team yeah. is uh, watching is way down since the baby. Good. I had a baby. Good. Seven months ago, my TV schedule has been cut down by yeah. nine tenths. Yeah. yeah, quite literally nine tenths. Well, and then I'm cheap too because I don't pay for cable, so I only watch what's on like <laughs> streaming, like Netflix and Hulu and what? stuff like that. So you're smart. Yeah. You're gonna keep your money too. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're not so, out buying crazy shit yeah. after the win. No, no, I no, I haven't. Huh? No, Anything? Haven't. Any yet. crazy purchases? Not yet. No, I mean these shoes were gifted to me. <laughs> Chad got me this Chad bag. This is my bag. very first Louis, Louis Vuitton. Vuitton. There. I never bought a. I bought my mom two. I don't have one. Well, by and the way, so, I know I know you can handle yourself, but be careful out here. We had an armed robbery in this oh, parking lot. Oh, so. yeah. Can you imagine what yeah. she would do to that guy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be amazing, That'd by the way. Great. So we might have to follow you Get out the, the camera out just there. in there case something happens. Well, I always say this, like, living in Chicago, like, you gotta be, you know, head on a swivel over there. And right. so... Uh, yeah. And I know how... In Chicago, how, yeah. you gotta have I know how to fight, but, like, what are you gonna do when somebody's, you know, you're staring down the barrel of yeah. a loaded gun? You go you know? here and enjoy this. Yeah, exactly. You need it. You need it. And then you call Chad and go, Chad, I need another one. Yeah, yeah. Chad, I'm so upset. I just got robbed at the Action Park Media parking lot. He'd say, figures. Yeah. Uh, when do you think the next fight is? Um, you know, I want to stay active. I would like to fight in the summertime. Summertime's good. I'm a I'm an August Leo Lion baby. Sometime in the summer would be great for me. What can what is considered active? Two fights a year? Uh yeah, yeah. About two fights a year. You gotta stay active. That's a lot. It is, especially at this uh, high of a level. Right. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, so, so we'll see you again in August, one of those Yeah, cards. maybe J- July, June, July, maybe maybe. And August. it'll be probably Nunez if that works out? That's or? the only fight that I'm taking. Okay. Somebody said, well, what if she goes up to 145 and takes an easier fight and rides off into the sunset? I'd be like, Phew. She would look like the biggest coward on earth. Like she would have to fight me, <laughs> right. you know. I think we're gonna have to handle this Valentina person as well. I, th- that's on my bucket list. Okay. Like, yeah, Let's she's get that next. on the list. She's next. Maybe I'll walk out, Doug. Could I be? Uh, maybe uh, I could walk out and. By the way, he's direction. pitched himself into your thing now. I mean, you'll be, you'll I'll be the lucky belt. leprechaun. I'll How about we belt. do something like that? The lucky charms or something. It'll be amazing. <laughs> I well, love it, uh, Juliana. I, this isn't me. I, I, I can't thank you enough. I mean, Kevin, uh, Kevin obviously prepared? made this happen, Come on, and my notes. you don't understand. This is a different person that is normally here. <laughs> I'm but, not. I'm not this prepared for our next interview. It's but but I don't. I don't say that. I don't. And we have a. Unbelievable <laughs> New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls basketball player coming on Charles Oakley, Charles who's Oakley. just one of my favorite players of all time. Nice, but uh, uh, he'll choke you out too. Oakley oh. will also. <laughs> choke By the way, that was for real. Probably <laughs> the toughest guy in the NBA, yeah. and, wow. and still he's probably sixty now or close to it. Yeah, him. Michael oh, wow. Jordan uh, would go out with no security because he had uh, Oakley. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, anyway, anyway, you're so cool. You're awesome, and and I mean that like just. You seem like you have your head on straight and you're doing the right thing. She and rolled I, up into the park. She just like showed up and was at the door. Like Mark we Cuban. We got to roll out you the know, red carpet for that, you, Doug. You know? like, if there's not people there greeting Doug at the door. He's like got an attitude for the rest of the <laughs> No, I felt bad. Yeah, the, the other guy, Gary, he had to walk down the street to find me because I was like, yeah, maybe I'll get some coffee. But I didn't have a mask, so I knew that they weren't going to let me in anywhere. Did and any part of you, because Connolly got Charlie Sheen's car towed from here, but did any part of you when no one was there to greet you, did you like, I'm going to kick someone's ass right now? Or are you calm and like, no, oh, no, good. I knew I was early. You know, my sister, she's like always in my ear, you have to be on time. You cannot, like, because I'm like, like very much on like you know Mexican yeah. time, Brazilian time, whatever <laughs> right. time you want to call it. I'm always late, yeah. and so uh, my sister's like, now that you're the champ, you have to be on time. And I love your sister for that because I do agree. It's very important. If you're not so. five minutes early, you're five minutes late. Very yeah, well I, said, I Kevin, that and that, uh, be, that uh, deserves a <laughs> kick to the head, in my opinion. But anyway, Julia, no, I'll, I'll, I'll have a choke out contest with you right now. No, I you go <laughs> first. <laughs> anyway, no, Julia, you're right. awesome. I wish that you luck amazing. in the fights, and we, we actually may call you to, to do a distracting acting job. But anyway, you're awesome, yes, and uh, yeah. best of luck with everything, and thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you guys for the time. I appreciate it. It's yeah. such a pleasure to be here with you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Podcast.